Right, let's try this again. Um, I'm saying that. Uh, so I got off to a false start. Um, can we have some light here, some light. We need a bit of... Uh, let's just play around with these camera settings and see if I can... I've no idea. Let's see if I can get some uh, some lights on the scene. Right, that's a bit better. Um, yeah, I was uh, checking the water level. It's got a, a drop in there. I know the lighting's quite poor. It needs a new uh, rad cap on that, actually. That one sticks. <sighs> it's been too long, really, for this car to be sat. But yeah, uh, I'm going to connect the battery up. Um... I think it'll be, yeah, it's ready to run. I can't remember doing any work on it for last time. That clip there, um, genuine motorcraft clip, um, everything is more expensive for forwards, especially original parts, of course, because everybody wants them. So I'll get the battery and uh, I didn't buy a new one for it. I've got a choice of two in the back up there, but that's the one going on. So I'll get that connected up and I'll give it a try. Right, the battery's on. It's actually the wrong, well, I say wrong, not wrong strictly, but the old one. Um, I couldn't see it down there, but it's got the little green... Uh, green ball showing just about you can just see it through the window which says it's okay even though i don't think it is because i borrowed my mate's uh, battery tester and uh, that showed it were bad that's the new one i bought for it it's one of them ford uh, specific batteries with them square uh, funny terminals on it so that's what I had to buy and it does, I know what's going to happen with this car, it's going to start churning and churning, um, the battery's going to almost run out of puff and then I'll rest it for a bit and then I'll try it again, then it'll fire up, so I'll give it a try. Right, uh, I was saying let's start again because um, I've got this bunch of keys and I took the ignition key off uh, that has this immobiliser. Now, I forgot it had this three keys for every lock, i.e. door, ignition and boot. And uh, it's got this immobiliser thingy fitted, which I'm going to remove uh, at some point, because it's uh, a, an unnecessary nuisance, really. Uh, but I've got the ignition key now. But what had happened was I'd forgotten, because uh, the door lock. Well, you you can open the door with a screwdriver. You know, you can unlock it with a screwdriver. The ignition uh, key switch, no such luck. Neither the boot nor the uh, door lock key fits that. Now there's probably somebody watching this who could uh, get around that little issue in about 60 seconds, but uh, I can't. So I had to go back for the correct ignition key there. And uh, the dimness of that light tells me I'm gonna have to have that uh, other battery on the new one so let's uh, give this a go I can charge up that old one though and just have it as a standby battery um, this is the fiddly job this is trying to get this thing in I know it's hard to see as well in the uh, in the darkness it's not good if you're in a hurry, you see, because everything's bloody 
you know, when time's against you, which it often is. Right, let's try that. Right, that's totally dead. Right, okay, the other battery. So I do need that new one. Right, um, maybe now with the new battery, just maybe I can coax it into life. It's got the forward It's got that pre-engaged starter Okay, switch off uh, it's no good uh, working the battery like that, it, it heats up and the uh, starter cables get hot. Um, you know, at least get a bit warm, so just give it a moment. Give a moment for the battery to recover. It's had a lot of modifications, performance mods this engine. So the compression ratio, I would imagine, is on the high side. It's also got electronic ignition, which should really, if you believe what people say about that, it should make it easier to start. Um, that pre-engaged starter, um, it's got the usual forward quirk. It's quite annoying really because, you know, on the other cars where you can turn the key and then you release it, and turn it again and the starter engages well this you've got to turn it back a notch before putting it on the starter again which is quite annoying really uh, anyway I'll give it another go yeah it, it, of all the cars this is the one that uh, is the hardest to start uh, after it's been stood a while it does not like standing around this car right come on nope looks like it's gonna do what i expected it to do waiting for that battery to recover a bit of uh, juice the plan with this is to put it back to uh, standard in so far as I'm going to get rid of them I'll lose the twin web of 40s I've got the original inlet manifold and uh, twin choke Weber that it had originally i've got two of them so uh, i can make a good one out of two if needs be but i'm just gonna try one first of all i, th I think the the both are right yeah the chap i bought it off he said uh, the butterflies were rattling on one of them but that's uh that's no big deal but yeah i'll put it back to its standard configuration for as far as carburetion goes and maybe then it's it'll be easier to to uh, fire up, maybe. But they had an auto choke, as far as I know, water uh, thermostat controlled auto choke. Right, let's try again. Come on, three times a charm. Let's try in there. Nearly had it. I told you. Mind you, we're not out of the woods yet. Let's give it another minute. I don't know whether it's fuel that needs um, pumping up to the carbs. I don't know if it's bleeding back into the tank. I just don't know. But let's just have a butcher's. Because I don't want, you know, speaking of fuel, I don't want it pissing out anywhere I can smell a bit I can smell a bit of fuel but now it's uh, wet with it 
but there's definitely petrol getting up there now and i do use the super octane for this engine um Yeah, it's getting a bit, they're getting a bit warm, the cables, you see. It takes a lot of current to uh, to start an engine. Right, it's going to go now. I know it is. It's going to go now. There you go. Now I've got to rev that past 2000, then the charge light goes out. Wake the alternator up. I need to replenish that battery, but yeah, there you go. I'll let it warm up for a bit, then I can get it out. Now I know it's working, that's fine. It's the same every time with this car leave it for a while, churn it over and then um, it starts just as the battery gives, wants to give up. It does sound good though, it does sound bloody good does that on the, uh, on the 40s. It's I'll uh, get it out then, back in a tick. Let it settle down. Yeah, yeah well, that's... <laughs> girls. Girls, I, I'm trying to concentrate. I'm trying to concentrate here. Trying to. So I'm going to get rid of these. Why you say you were going to the pub well, instead of fixing it? I am. Um, well, I've took refuge in the pub. Well, as I was saying, I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, lose these and put it back to its standard original. Uh, I think it's a twin choke Weber, Weber DGAV or something. I've I've got two of them, so. One will work. Uh, the reason for that is reliability, really, more than anything, because uh, this car was made at the time when uh, the manufacturers started fitting emissions and open crankcase breathing was was out. It became uh, verboten. So we've got a multitude of breather pipes some i think fuel return and what have you and there's no connection for them with these carburetors so i just want to put it back to how it should be and it should run a lot better and be a bit more reliable um yeah and i'll get rid of all this you know pipe here which isn't proper fuel pipe at all but there's the ignition module it's buried oh where is it there lumination that's an old uh, lumination setup but yes it is getting there and it is a genuine example i did the cam belt refitted the cover done a couple of other jobs one thing uh, one of the reasons why uh, I'm not driving it very far is because of that 
I've never had any other car where the differential, uh, the axles rotted through. That has allowed oil to leak out. Um, the chap before me has uh, crudely welded it up, but it's still leaking. Uh, as a result of that, the diff, as you will hear, is quite noisy. So uh, it's an axle off job really, so I can um, make a, a proper repair on it. But it's, it's getting there, you know, it's getting there. So I'm gonna fire it up now and uh, hit the road. that's another job I need to do and all um, that's telling me the brake fluid is getting low that's because the master cylinders uh, leaking uh, not excessively but it's at the low level so I've got this warning light telling me that it's uh, it's going Right, we'll uh, we'll get going then. controls are quite heavy really, the, the, the steering especially so. Uh, more so than the other cars. Everything's crudely made on it and put together but you know, all is forgiven because it's so addictive. <laughs> Honestly, it's so much fun and it just wants to go faster and faster than it just urges you to put your foot down this car. I mean, they were bloody rubbish forwards, but uh, that's irrelevant now. I'd still rather have this than any of the shit they churn out now. It's got character, that's what it's got. You can probably hear that axle, uh, that differential whining a bit, that's complaining. It's got its uh, standard four speed gearbox. I know a lot of blokes fit five speeds from a Sierra or whatever, but It's pretty damn well tall geared, you know, compared to what I'm used to. Not wrong with the gearing in standard spec. So, yeah, I want to carry on with getting it properly uh, up to scratch. And then just 
start using it more, really. That is the plan. So I hope you've enjoyed this, because I know I've, I don't know if I have featured it on the channel before or not, but if I have, I don't think it's been a proper introduction, so. There we go. The old RS2000. I like it, I do. I really do like it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Great fun. If you want to see more, um, and yeah, leave us an old like, comment, or whatever, and uh, see you in the next one.